This podcast is brought to you by our friends at Anchor by Spotify. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No specialty training or equipment needed. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast worldwide on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, like I've been saying, Anchor is totally free. It's free. Download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started and make your podcast dreams a reality. That's anchor.fm. What are you waiting for? Download the app. Well, it's a big show. Welcome to the Fade Route. It's a big bad show tonight. With DNZ. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Fade Route with DNZ. I am Z and we got a great show for ya. Nathaniel Hackett loses his job in Denver. Mike White is cleared to play. And, better late than never, we air our grievances as part of our festivist celebration. But we begin with some quick hits. Quick hits. First things first, hot off the presses. Las Vegas Raiders former quarterback, Derek Carr, by the team in favor of Jared Stidham, formerly of the New England Patriots, you know, kind of familiar with head coach Josh McDaniels' system, if you will. Carr, leading the league in interceptions this year, is taking a hiatus, a break, a step away from the Raiders and he has effectively he's effectively gone from that organization and it makes you wonder what the point of it was they whipped on Brady they brought in Stidham they don't have an heir apparent the Raiders are going to Raider it's what they do And we would also be remiss if we did not mention we're in the throes of the college bowl season and the college football playoff is here. What are you doing New Year's Eve? 4 p.m.? You have the Fiesta Bowl. You have the TCU Horn Frogs led by Hacksaw Max Duggan. And the number two, 13-0, Michigan Wolverines. A relatively even matchup if you look at the stats, if you look at just what's on paper, these two teams seemingly are going to have an evenly fought contest. Their points per game scored was only two tenths of a percent difference. Where Michigan's really gonna, like, where where they're really gonna excel is in defense. So, if they are to do this, then the Wolverines are gonna have to do this on the defensive end. And in your main event of the evening at 8 p.m. in the Chick fil A Peach Bowl, the 11 1 Ohio State Buckeyes, the number four seed in this little tournament, go up against head coach Kirby Smart and the 13 0 Georgia Bulldogs. Again, a relatively even match game, if you look at it. 
about a five-point differential in the favor of Ohio State's offense, a seven-point differential in favor of Georgia's defense, and yards almost identical. Almost identical. We're going to see what's going to happen. I don't know where the rest of the country is hanging their hats. I really don't know if they want Ohio State versus Michigan in the finals. It seems to me like college football playoff was angling for that, was hoping for that, which is why they're on either side of the bracket. But, you know, we root for chaos on this show. We're agents of chaos. Maybe a little TCU Georgia. Maybe that would be nice. Or TCU Ohio State if we really want to fuck some shit up. Like, let's uh, let's see what's going to happen. But ultimately, it's hard for me not to think that Georgia is ultimately going to come out on top of this. Right? They're, they're coming out of the SEC. They are a hard-nosed football team. They produce NFL-ready caliber players, and they, they're just better. They are just better, and I believe that they will prove it when the time comes. And here he is. I've known this guy since our days on Carousel Shoes, flight crew through and through, the last QB in St. John's history. What's up, D? How's it going, man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we have to talk about the college football playoff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get something to watch. I'm, I'm with you, though. I mean, I, you know, with all the time that's passed, it's hard to believe that the Horn Frogs would be able to top Michigan. It's hard to believe that Ohio State would be able to top Georgia. I mean, Georgia's defense is their front seven is just so powerful. I mean, I think we're heading towards a Georgia-Michigan championship game, and I think that's what everybody wants to see. Um, yeah, I actually think it'll be closer than I think it would be. I kind of think Georgia's going to stop out Michigan, but I, I could be persuaded to believe it's going to be a good game, and that'll actually be close. Um, you know, Harbaugh's coaching very well this season. He's not his quarterback that can deliver the football and not turn it over. And Kirby Smart is just, you know, he's, his defense plays outstanding. Um, they're the defending champions. They have players that will be going in, in the first two rounds of the draft. Uh, so it, 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 sets, it sets up rather nicely. It definitely sets up rather nicely. And you, know, you definitely want that underdog story of TCU. I think it's definitely like. Yeah, Iowa, it's, like, it's nice the, that they're the there. Season, yeah. yeah. It's nice that they're there. And I think I think they match up a little bit better than Cincinnati would, or yeah. Cincinnati has in the past. Or yeah, like I a agree. team like Coastal Carolina that we were uh, trying to get on board with you know, two seasons ago. I, I You know, this is a more, because of the conference they play in, I think it's a more prepared uh, Cinderella story. It's a more prepared underdog. And you don't think there's anything to this idea that they kept Michigan and Ohio State apart because they secretly want them to play in the championship game? I don't see why they would want that. I mean, Georgia's, <laughs> a, Georgia's a big enough draw. Um, and, um, you know, we already saw Michigan destroy Ohio State. So why would we want to see, well, why would we want to see that again? Uh, I'm kind of surprised that Ohio State's there, but they... <laughs> You know, this all fell in their lap, and it was hard to argue against them taking the four spot. I mean, you really, I mean, at the end of the day, like, there were only so many one loss teams that you could choose from, and frankly, their loss was against Michigan. So, Michigan, they're, you know, undefeated, easily the number two seed. Like, you got to give, you got to give Ohio State credit for that. You know, there's no such thing as a bad loss, but if there is going to be such a thing as a bad loss, you know, that's kind of, that's one that they, you know, that that's one that they don't mind. It's not like USC where they got bounced by Oregon to bookend the season. Yeah, so, but there was a bad loss and it was at home and it was at the end of the season. USC had a bad, USC had a bad loss in the season. Hey, TC, you had a bad loss at the end of the season. The only thing I would say is I, in I know you'd be surprised to say yeah, Alabama's losses, they were just one possession losses. And a lot of times it was out of their control. Like a team came down the field and scored on them and won the game like one last second. Like they weren't able to retaliate. I don't normally 
defend Alabama, but if it's one team that, you know, maybe should have gotten the benefit of the doubt this year, it was them. Yeah, I mean, when you lose by single digits twice in the way that they've lost, it, it is a compelling argument. But at the same time, you know, it, it's hard. You know, you're, you're not going to keep out Georgia. That's for sure. No, no. You're not going to keep out Michigan. Right. Like, at right. that point, it's really a toss-up. Are you going to kick out? Are you going to kick out Ohio State, or are you going to kick out TCU? In yeah, favor this is of the problem. Yeah, right. This is the problem with explaining the playoff because, in reality, like Alabama shouldn't be there. Ohio State probably shouldn't be there, and um, uh, Alabama sh- probably shouldn't be there. Like you know, some USC. It probably should like so now when you expand this playoff you're gonna get a lot of teams that really shouldn't be there playing and it's just gonna diminish the product they don't care about that they don't care about that they don't care about that at all but um we're looking you know, at diminished products we're talking about the we're talking about the raiders you're talking about diminished products right? oh god i mean <laughs> I, we were talking about this at length in production meetings he's just he's just a trash player um and you know, didn't talk about Derek Carr, and it's like people were giving him chance after chance. They were always making excuses for him. It's like, oh, you know, it's he doesn't have anybody to throw to. It's oh, he doesn't have a running back. Oh, you know what? He doesn't have a real head coach. It's like, dude, we're out of excuses for you. Like, you just not played up to your potential over what eight years he's been there. Um, it's just been a waste of everybody's time. They literally wasted the best years of Josh Jacobs' career. They wasted this year for Devontae Adams. But, you know, I think I think the head coach said it great in this press conference. It's like we're just not we're just not getting good quarterback play. Like routine passes, normal passes, he's not he's not making competent throws. There was a there was a play in the game last weekend where Hunter Renfro is running wide open in the middle of the field. He overthrows him. Like, this can't happen. It's not raining. It's not snowing. Deliver them. You should be able to put the football wherever you want to put it at this point in your career. And you just, you just can't. And um, I'm just tired of him. It's hard to believe, like, John Gruden passed up Tom Brady for Derek Carr, if you want to believe those reports. But it'd be interesting, it'd be interesting to see what happens because, I mean, I wonder if Josh McDaniels is going to go after Tom Brady. That all implies that Josh McDaniels is going to be there. He's definitely going to be there. He's definitely going to be there because they would, if they would, if he was going to hit the road, he would have hit the road by now. He would have definitely hit the road by now because he lost to Jeff Saturday. (laughs) He lost to Jeff Saturday. Who's probably going to be on the road himself? Right. He would have been gone by now. So I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see if Tom winds up going to Las Vegas. And interested to see where Derek, like you and I disagree. I don't think there's a market for Derek Carr. I don't think there's a team out there that says, man, you know what? We don't have Devontae Adams. We don't have Josh Jacobs. But man, if Derek Carr came in here, we fucking contend for a title. Like nobody's saying that. Not even the Colts are saying that. They say that about everybody. Like I just, I just don't, I don't see that mindset. I don't see how you can look at Derek Carr and not want to explore the draft or get a person who's actually won a playoff game like a Jimmy G. Or a Tom Brady, um, you know, someone who's someone who knows what it's, you know, who's a competent passer. I mean, even Carson Wentz, right? You got to figure he might be hitting, he might be in the road after this year too. Um, but, but you know, he is only 31 years old. That's the thing. It's that there's plenty, of, there is plenty of tread left on the tire, and teams will kick a kick the tires on him. But I think he's going to be a consolation prize. He's not going to be. He's not going to be somebody's like sought after primary target. Who it's going to be. Who, it's going to be like think, Marcus Mariota. Who like is Marcus the number? Mariota was a fallback option. Who is the number one quarterback this offseason? Who is the guy that everyone's going to be clamoring over? And I'm my my response to this is going to surprise you. Lamar Jackson. If I'm going to do top three. Oh, okay. Lamar, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Lamar yeah. Jackson, Jimmy G, Tom Brady. See, I think, I think. I think Tanny Dimes is on a mm. high on a lot of people's list. I think he's he's the guy Tampa is going to go for. I think they're like, listen, he didn't have any weapons in New York, and look, they almost went to the playoffs. They won like seven out of their first eight games. 
we can get him down here. We can teach him how to play quarterback. We got Bruce Arians here. We got Tom Moore here. We've got Byron Leftwich here. Tom's out. We can teach this kid how to play quarterback and throw the ball in a nice climate down here. I really think he's the guy that people are gonna people are gonna target. I think he's number one on people's list. I think you might say you might think it's funny, but I think Chino Smith is number two on people's list. And I think Ryan Tannehill is number three on people's list. Tom Brady Tom Brady is is, is a certain is a certain air, right? It's like you gotta have a team that's ready. Like we are a player away. You know, that's the only situation where he works. And that's why I think Vegas might be the only spot for Tom because it, Josh McDaniels is there. He ain't going to he ain't going to Indianapolis. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets tried to get Tom Brady because they think that they're almost there. Um, but and then you know, and that's a situation where you don't get Mike White, even though I think Mike White is one of the few players that want to come back. Like, you know, he's a guy that wants to come back to the Jets. Um, I think Jimmy G's injury is, is kind of scared people away from him. He gets hurt every year. You can't keep him. You can't keep him healthy. No. But, well, that's the thing. We have to keep an eye on the Niners, too, because if they do not win this year with the amount, with the talent and team they have assembled, yeah, they are the team that is a quarterback away. Now, yeah. Do you throw... Fifty million dollars at Tom Brady for one yeah. year, and yeah. say, "Tom, take us to the promised land and fulfill your dream of playing for the Niners." Yeah, hundred percent. I could totally see that happen. Even though people would argue that that won't happen because of Trey Lance and because of what's happening right now with Brock Purdy. Because then, does that mean you're letting Brock Purdy go? Like, but yeah, I mean, I could totally see that happening. I think the Cardinals are going to be in the market for a quarterback because I don't know if Kyler Murray is going to be able to come back week one. And you've got to, you've got to try to win games. This quarterback position, there's a lot of question marks. But... Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodies, snapbacks, graphic tees, accessories and more season three merch is up now get it while you can go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women that's fckclout.com there's one question mark that's already up in the air with the retirement of J.J. Watt. The defensive tackle said this weekend will be his last, well, the next couple weeks will be his last two games as a professional football player. Watt, who spent most of his career with the Texans, will be wrapping up his career with the Cardinals. Only player to lead the league in sacks twice, five-time Pro Bowler, five-time NFL First Team, member of the All-Decades Team, three-time Defensive Player of the Year. I don't think anybody's ever done that either. How will Watt be remembered, and is he a Hall of Famer? He'll be remembered as a legendary player. He will be, but I cannot. Well, hang on. Let me let me <laughs> let me finish my sentence before you scoff at what I'm saying. He'll be remembered as a legendary player, but tell me a great JJ Watt moment. Tell me a great JJ Watt play. You can't. good players. Right. Stand out. Nothing he has ever done is stand out. He's just very good. Now, a lot of that has to do with him being brought up in the defense with Whitney Merciless and Brian Cushing. He had guys around him that essentially funneled to him for sex team effort. He was very good. The three-time defensive player of the year. You know, Walter Payton, award, for what he did during Hurricane Harvey, Walter Payton Man of the Year, a legitimate philanthropist. Legitimate good guy. Right? That, that's a good move. Charismatic as hell. Right? He and his brothers. He had that show, like they co-hosted that tag show 
for a while. I didn't watch it, but it looked stupid. <laughs> um, you know, the, the guys all over the subway commercials. The guy's got he's got charisma in space. Like he's got charisma all day. But on the field, like I can't think of a more nondescript air quote great player. And as far as his future goes, like based on the fact that he is so charismatic that he's able to have that gift of gab and seemingly he's able to translate that on camera unlike a guy like Gronkowski who looks extremely uncomfortable right Gronk is very good at being Gronk but he it looks forced on Fox JJ Watt can slip right in kind of like Howie Long and I think that JJ Watt you could do worse if you put him in the Monday Night Booth or you you could do worse if you have him with Kirk Herbstreet and Al Michaels I could see him in an analyst role very quickly because he does understand the game. He can give you that defensive perspective and he's charismatic. But as far as him on the field, he was good. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm glad you're with me on this. I think he's he's a very good player. It's the Hall of it's a Hall of Fame at the Hall of Very Good. I mean, I got into an argument with several people over the last two days regarding his uh, legacy, what he means to the game of football. I mean, at the end of the day, he's not a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, well, you can't, you're going to mention his name with guys like Deacon Jones. You're going to mention his name with guys like Bruce Smith, Lawrence Taylor, even Michael Strahan. Someone's trying to argue with me that he was better than Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan, as a not only does Michael Strahan have the sack record, he's got a Super Bowl championship and he beat arguably the best team ever. Like, he, to me, you know, he, J.J. Watt played on a lot of stacked defensive teams. They did nothing. They never got anywhere. People found ways to get around the Texans defense without having to deal with him. Like, is Brian Cushing going to the Hall of Fame too? Hall of Fame juicer, maybe. Is it, Wendy Merciless, like you said. It, just think about this. J.J. Watt was on the same line of Jadavian Clowney. Mm-hmm. What happened? What What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. Why nothing? 11 years. 11 years, you only made five. You only, you know, first team five times. Five Pro Bowls in 11 years. Where the hell were you? Were you for six? Hurt. Hurt. Not, not part of it. So, I mean... Listen, he's a super nice guy. I think it's great all the all the charity work he's done, everything he's done for Texas. He's he's a nice guy. But you know what? The, the, the fact of the matter is, is when it's all said and done, he's going to be TJ's brother. Because mm-hmm. TJ is turning out to be a better player than him. Way better player. And he's another guy that's hurt all the damn time. But yeah, I mean, I never really liked J.J. Watt. I don't give a shit. Like, he's leaving. Goodbye. Thanks. For whatever you did and uh, whatever eventually he will get in because yeah. that's the law of averages you know like very good players are getting into the hall of fame he'll end up on the ballot he'll end up as a finalist and eventually he'll get hit i feel like that's going to be i think it's a fait accompli i think it's just the way sports in general is going i just don't recall people ever having the game plan for jj watt and i remember at one time in a, when the Texans were playing, I think the Patriots might have been in a playoff game, AFC Wild Card or something like that. And somebody asked Bill Belichick, "How does JJ Watt measure up? You know, compared to Lawrence Taylor?" And Bill Belichick just scoffed at the question, just like, "Please, are you kidding me? Like, stop." Yeah. He's not. He's he's not a game wrecker. Like, he's not a Ray Lewis or an Ed Reed, Deion Sanders. Like these guys. People had to play, had to be planned for. I'm gonna even go as far as to say he's not a Darrell Revis, and I hate talking about that guy. But it's not like we gotta worry about running up the A gap because JJ Watt's there. Like, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna use his aggressiveness to our advantage. He over fucking plays, plays. We're gonna throw screen passes behind him. We're gonna double him and go through him. Like, you know, they, I, yeah, it's whatever. It's whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's blasphemy to think that people are comparing him, that that Lawrence Taylor comparison, or Reggie White, or any, yeah. anything like that. No, he's... In, that's in the, terms, 
Right. Yeah, that's the it, problem. It's overrated. No, it's the problem. It's the problem. It's like you want to you want to glorify these guys. You want to you want to give them a gold jacket. But dude, the guys in there that already have gold jackets, he can't sit at their table. Nowhere near their table. Come on, if if JJ Watt's going in, well, I guess Vince Wolfert's getting in. Cause that guy got like five rings, and he played on the same line with JJ Watt for a couple of years. I would argue Vince Wolfert more so because what he was able to do and stifle the run game. I, how about, I would. How about Casey Hampton? Casey Hampton to me was a better defensive tackle than JJ Watt in the three four. I would say that's fair. I mean, it's hard to say who would be the best player come to him. You know, I mean, like John Randall comes to mind. Like, John yeah, Randall was very good, I guess. but I don't, you know, you could get John Randall off his game, and you can, you know, you didn't have, you know, you could beat the Vikings with John Randall on the... Booger McFarlane was better than J.J. Watt. Booger McFarlane's got a ring. Yeah. I, I think Booger McFarlane, I'd rather have Booger McFarlane. I want to, I want to stop a guy who's going to plug the gap. I just, I don't know, maybe I didn't watch enough Texans games. I just don't recall him being a problem. Like, oh, God, here's J.J. Watt again. Like I, I don't, I don't recall that at all. Yeah, I mean, if you look like, if you're looking at it, JJ Watt only has 111 and a half sacks for his career. So like, that's you know, that's impressive. He's also, he's leaving before his age 34 year. You know, longevity is not going to be kind to him. Much in the same way that a Patrick Willis or a Luke Keekley. Right. Like these guys are leaving early, and you know, bless him for it. We re- I already mentioned he's got a job waiting for him. Whatever he wants to do, he's, if he wants to make subway commercials for the rest of his life, like he's fine. Like he he will he will thrive in his role. But you know, he just he didn't do it long enough. Right. And he, he, right. Yeah. I mean, you talking about like what Strahan played for almost twenty years. And he, Years, something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, it's crazy that I, I kind of pulled the John Randall out of my ass. But like, Randall had two more forced fumbles, twenty nine to twenty seven. Watt had seventeen fumble recoveries to Randall's eleven, and then Randall had one hundred thirty seven and a half sta- one hundred thirty seven and a half sacks. I would 13, think Rand- yeah, Randall played longer, only two years. Thir- more. Thirteen years, and only two years more. So. Yeah, there you go. but you know, very good, but not good. Hall, not Hall of Fame. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads, Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto. We really care about what's under your hood. Getting on Hall of Fame, we're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett was relieved of his duties after the 51 to 14 beatdown, ass whooping Christmas present he got from Baker Mayfield and the Rams, and he got clowned by Patrick Starr on Nickelodeon. So, you know, it's bad when the guy from SpongeBob. Is talking shit. <laughs> so, was this the right move for the Broncos? Who will be joining Mr. Hackett in the unemployment line? And who fixes this mess in Denver? Man, so, I mean, they really did him a favor, right? I mean, I wouldn't want to be there anymore either. Like, this was just, a, this was just awful from the start. Like, it was just awful, awful from the start. They, the Broncos games are unwatchable games. So they did him a favor by cutting him loose. I don't know if he'll ever get another job again. I mean, his, I don't, I'm not a fan of the Hackett family. I don't think they really know how to coach football. But, man, what a, what a terrible, terrible situation. As far as who's going to be joining him on the unemployment line, huh. I don't really know. Uh, I would, I would say Mr. Saturday, say Jeff Saturday's got all the all the makings to be joining somebody out there. Um, but I don't know if there's much. I don't know if there's much else. I think. Um, 
I think it might not be as black of a Monday as it has in years past, right? I mean, the Ravens are making the playoffs, so John Harbaugh shouldn't lose his job. McVay's not going to lose his job. Tom is not going to lose his job. For some god awful reason, Robert Sala's not going to lose his job. Um, you kind of think uh, you kind of think the head coach of the Raiders might lose his job, Josh McDaniels? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe Todd Bowles if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't make the playoffs. I think the Carolina Panthers have played so well under Wilkes. Um, I'd be I'd be upset if he lost his job because he really turned that organization around. It shows you how terrible the coach Matt Rule was. Jeez, I mean, they're talented. They're putting up points and everything. Um, yeah, so I, I don't I don't I don't really know if there's going to be as much of a massacre as there has been in years before. I who think. Fi- and then who fixes this mess? I don't know how this gets fixed because you got to find someone that's going to come in and fix Russell Wilson. Mm. I don't know if that person's been born yet. I don't know if that person's. <laughs> I don't think that person's been created. So I don't know who can go in there and fix that. Um, I mean, he's god awful, god awful. I don't know what what's wrong with him. I don't know what's going on in his personal life, his life, but dude is bad, like really bad. I don't think they turn to another first-year coach after this, right? You think a guy like Daryl Bevel, who was Russell Wilson's offensive coordinator in Seattle. That guy can't the- coach. That guy can't <laughs> coach, man. Called the infamous pass play that every that lives in infamy. No, that, it's that not ended- bad. Come on. It's <laughs> not bad. He, Come on. He knew, he knew what he was doing. That was a good play call. Good play call. Um, you have Marshawn Lynch. You're on the two yard line. Everybody thinks that, ball. but everybody thinks that's coming. He tried to be cute. Well, right, and exactly, it cost him the Super Bowl. So okay. don't be too cute. Don't be right. too cute. Don't but be too cute. cute. Well, but the, the te- teams are learning that on the fly. And another guy who might be too cute for his own good is Mike McDaniel. Like you get your quarterback in the concussion oh, protocol three, three times. Yeah, three times. Good. It's not looking good. If I'm at the NFL, I am investigating what the hell is going on with Miami Dolphins. That's three times that Tua Tonga Vailoa has gotten knocked into next Tuesday. Not good there. I it's mean, not. It's not three, a good look three, at all. Three times this year, they're probably going to miss the playoffs. They're probably going to lose this weekend, and they shouldn't. I mean, they're super talented, but you got to start to wonder if the NFL might not be a place to uh, could play in. I don't, I don't know. I really right. sorry, I really the comparison I'm drawing is like Sydney Sydney Crosby. For mm-hmm. some reason that's the thing I'm person I'm thinking about who really took a lot of time off before coming back and even when he come even when he coming back, you know, it seems like the NHL NHL protects him. Even the players, they know what's at stake. They're not even trying to headhunt on him, you know? And I don't know if the NFL can be that way because in the last hit, he said really didn't hit the ground that hard. No, I mean it doesn't have to. Like that's the thing with it with a concussion, especially you know players that have had multiple concussions will attest to this. It doesn't need to be much after you've had your first one, right? Steve Young will attest to that. Troy Aikman will attest to that. Anybody who's had multiple concussions will say it just it doesn't have to be super violent. It just has to knock your brain loose. And that's the problem. Like, at some point, it's going to come down on the Dolphins. Because that's twice now that he's gone back into the game. And he's been addled. He's clearly been addled. But let's focus on the Broncos. Like, I, th- I don't think McDaniel... McDaniel is on thin ice. But I think he will survive. Yeah, Barely. 100%. But they're gonna, But they're going to watch him. the lowest scoring team in the league they don't rush the ball very much they don't throw the ball very much but I don't know what they do like it's just they kind of waste time I mean they're 25th in the league in points against so as good as that defense has been it's stressed too much it's on the field too much because Russ is can't, hey, Russ can't cook you know, this is the whole thing about, oh, now we're going to open up the offense, right? We've got this guy. He was, you know, he was Aaron Rodgers, his, you know, QB whisperer, which is probably where he's going to end up next year. He's probably going to end up back in Green Bay. But um, 
like he's a safe haven. It's going to be like McDaniel's once he gets canned by the Raiders. He's going to end up back in, in New England again. Like he can always run home to dad. But <sighs> Russell Wilson looks lost. He looks, but he just looks terrible. And this offense never gelled. They lost Javante Williams. They they haven't had it hasn't clicked all year. Now Brandon Staley making the playoffs probably saved his job unless he just gets his doors blown off in the playoffs. Because Sean Payton is out there. And he wants the coach. He's already rumor has it, he's already put uh, he's already put in the works to get Vic to get Vic Fangio to come with him to be his DC. So that's already pretty formula, formidable, right? And Vic Fangio knows Denver, knows them well. Sean Payton may be, able, may be able to unlock this offense. He might be able to unlock Russell Wilson. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Guys that are on the hot seat besides, you know, the obvious, like Saturday's an interim. That's probably, he's going to get his ass shown the door. Hackett's already gone. I don't know about Wilkes. Like they, uh, you know, this owner, you know, David Tepper, he's temperamental. So I don't know that if he goes, if he sees, if he can, becomes enamored with somebody with a bigger name, that he might just jump. I mean, they're already paying eight hundred million dollars in fired coach salaries in the NFL. Like. That, that memo was sent out and there's like that's a lot of fucking money guys like that that's crazy there's crazy talk so I think Kingsbury's on the short list I think he's gonna go I think you know Staley's is results based Mike Vrabel might very well be on the hot seat this team was supposed to be a Super Bowl at least dark horse they still they make them think it's a- they can still make the playoffs, though, can't they? They can still make the playoffs, but this team has been a horrible underachiever. This has been a this team has been a horrible underachiever to the point where the Jacksonville Jaguars have taken that division from them and might very well take the division from them. They already fired their GM. They already fired their GM. For making one of the worst trades ever, and rightfully so. And then you're looking at a guy like Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen is, is he going to survive not making the change back to James Winston? <laughs> is Arthur Smith going to survive in in Atlanta? Oh, geez. These are, you know, it's it's perilous, but that division is so bad that everybody could probably return. Everybody could probably get another shot at it because it's been so shitty. You know, there the owners and GMs might be very willing to just talk chalk it up as a bad year and say we'll put some weapons around you. I can see Daniel Jones going to Atlanta too. If not Tampa Bay, Atlanta would be a fine fit for him. Like they want to run a mobile, you know, an offense with a mobile quarterback. They tried that with Marcus Mariota. I would argue that he's a better player than Marcus Mariota. I mean, that's not it's damning him with faint praise, but I think that Arthur Smith could be on the, the block. Vrabel could be on the block. There's There are a lot of guys that, you know, that could be they could very well be. I mean, guys like Lovey Smith, he's not going anywhere. Like he knew what they they knew what they were getting into when they signed when they brought in Lovey Smith. It's part of a long term rebuild. Did they know they were only gonna win two games? No, probably not. But, you know, like the Texans are committed to that and that's why they're doing it. And they have but pick in the draft so they, they they will they might. They they very well might, but I mean if we look at the week that was Right, the Panthers beat the Lions. Right, that that wasn't supposed to go down like that. That certainly wasn't supposed to go down like that. The Saints beat the Browns. That wasn't supposed to go down like that. And then, you know, the Vikings narrowly escaped on a 61-yard field goal against the Giants. To me, that shows you more about the Giants. The Bengals almost blew a 22-point lead. The Titans lose to the Texans. And then the Cowboys, the Cowboys beat the Eagles. So, you know, where are we going here? Like, what, what are we doing? What, what is, you know, what is the future hold for us as we go down the stretch here? Anything can happen.
For all the grill masters, green thumbers, home repair heroes, and DIY aficionados in the Richmond, Virginia area, if you're looking for a personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience, look no further than Thacker Ace Hardware in Colonial Heights, Virginia. Owner Don Rackley and his team of local experts have everything you need to tackle all of your home projects. I'm talking paints by Benjamin Moore and Clark in Kensington, power tools by Craftsman and Milwaukee, electrical, plumbing, hardware, and let's not miss the grill. Weber, Big Green Egg, Traeger, Blackstone, top shelf, amazing. And for all you green thumbers, their nursery department is fantastic. Give them a call today, 804-766-4223, or stop by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. That's 804-766-4223, or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. Thacker Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. You know, one thing we know for sure, he's back. He's back. Yes, he's back. Back again. Miguel Blanco, Jets QB, Mike White, cleared by doctors a few days ago and will start this weekend as the Jets try to make the playoffs. Zach Wilson, as predicted, shit the bed. Uh, he will be inactive. They will go, you know, right back, right back to wearing a suit. Are the Jets handing the court? Or are they handling this correctly? I mean, this guy is so bad that they don't want to even give him a jersey to wear on Sunday. They would rather give Joe Flacco, who retired two years ago, <laughs> a, a jersey to wear and to come in and be inept than have this guy. I mean, the game against the Jaguars was just awful. How about this? On the first drive of the game, Quinn and Williams sacks, Zach, sacks Trevor Lawrence, causes a fumble that the Jets recover. They go three and out and kick a field goal, and that's the only point of the whole game for the Jets. They couldn't move the ball or score the whole entire game. I mean, come on, man. Come on, you, you couldn't, you can't, you can't move the ball? Uh, I just, I mean, how could we not hold the general manager and and the head coach accountable for this. We heard Robert Salas say that Zach's doing great in practice. He's making real strides. I see a change in him. That he gets benched in the game against the Jaguars. The guy comes off the street, I don't even know his name, winds up throwing for just as many passing yards as Zach does. And the following week, Zach can't even put on a uniform. I don't know, man. I I don't know. I I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to handle. I don't know how to answer how they're handling the quarterback situation. I mean, I just I don't know. I don't know. What what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, in my opinion, if you're trying, if you're trying to win, if you're trying to make the playoffs, you should be starting the second overall pick in the draft in his second year, just like. The Jags are starting their number one pick. If you're trying to, I don't know, see what you got for next year, spin it on a world, if you don't care, then start Mike White. See if he's worth getting, giving him a contract. But you can't in your right mind be bringing Zach Wilson back after this. He's done. He's done. Here. And frankly, this whole situation has been foobar from the get go, right? We're gonna let's bring in a veteran quarterback to push Zach Wilson. You choose a a guy in Joe Flacco, who seems so disinterested. Like you said, he retired two years ago. Why are you not on the phone, moving heaven and earth to get Nick Foles? Now, we saw what Nick Foles is, but still. He'll push you. He'll push your quarterback, right? Whether it's White or it's Wilson, Nick Foles will do that. 
A guy like last year, they had the ability to get Gardner Minshew. Minshew was available. Why aren't you moving heaven and earth to bring in a guy that won? Like he has experience and he's won at this level. Why aren't you why aren't you trying to to do something like that? The only thing you're saying is that this kid can't handle being pushed. That is what you're saying when you don't when you bring in a lame duck backup. This kid won't beat out the veteran. It was like Matt Flynn and Russell Wilson. Matt Flynn got beat. He was the incumbent. And he got beat. What you're saying to me when you don't bring in a, a, a veteran quarterback like that is like, this kid isn't going to handle it well. And frankly, this is what you get for being enamored with pro day. What happens at a pro day? You are in shorts. You are not in pads. You are not reading an opposing defense. It's a drill. It it is a showcase. You had the tape on him. You saw what he was good at. You saw what he was not what, what he was struggling with. You saw the conference he played in. These are the things that Joe Douglas needs to be held account for. Robert Sala, he's a defensive head coach at the end of the day. Like he know he knows what's going on. He's trusting Matt, Matt LaFleur's little brother and the quarterback's coach and whoever's on the offensive side of the ball is trying to fix Zach Wilson. And clearly it is not working, right? Career, he's at a 55% completion percentage. 5.2 for his career. He's at 54.5 this year. 15 career touchdowns, 18 career picks. Ball security is an issue. Decision making is an issue. Just play in general is an issue with this guy. Now, when you look at Mike White, okay, eight career touchdowns, 10 career picks, 1,905 yards, 64% completion percentage. Now, He's only started seven career games. He's only been in seven career games. You don't know what you ultimately have because he got hurt. I believe in the Cincinnati game, he got torched and fractured his ribs in the Buffalo game. That's, you know, that is something you need to worry about if you're the Jets too. Like, is this guy going to be able to survive long term? Because that's, that's twice that he's had to miss time. And if I'm Joe Douglas, like I whiffed on Zach Wilson, I'm going to get rid of Zach Wilson. I'm going to get what I can for Zach Wilson. Because I don't believe that he's able to thrive in this. Mike White, I don't know if I can protect him. I don't know long term. Because when he's gotten his shot, he's gotten injured. Like, is he just going to be a guy like, oh, he, you know, the what might have been with Mike White if he only didn't get hurt? Like, that, that, that's, that feels like how Mike White's career trajectory is going. But the Jets are going to be heavily invested in the market, in the free agent market. Could they do a reunion with Mike White? Absolutely. Can they can they explore the free agent market to try and bring in a veteran quarterback? Absolutely. We've already listed a bunch of guys that are going to be available, right? Like you have your Derek Carrs, you have your Geno Smiths, you're going to have your Jimmy G's, a certain 46 year old quarterback coming out of Tampa Bay. The Jets are going to be in the market. 
because they foobarred this thing from jump. Joe Flacco shouldn't have been on this roster. He shouldn't have started at the beginning of the year. And now you're just kind of making it up as you go along. And the Jets are paying for this. And they may just end up lucking into... That would be the most Jet thing ever. You don't have a quarterback, and you just lucked into a playoff spot. Like, you just totally, like, because at the end of the day, like, they have to, they have to win, and the Patriots have to lose out. Which could Patriots, happen. it could very well happen, because the Patriots suck. Yeah. But I can't believe that word, that sentence just came out of my mouth. But the, the Patriots suck. So, we're, good, we're definitely going to see can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Pop Stars, located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Pop Stars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio, quickly expanding. In-person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to westchesterpopstars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester Pop Stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, or Google. Well, one thing we don't need to see is how great Damian Lillard is. On Monday, Dame Lillard became the all-time leading scorer in Blazers history. Big deal, little deal, or no deal to you? You know, it's it's a big deal. I think he, I'm pretty sure he, he passed Clyde Drexler. Um, the only thing that's kind of sad about it is that, you know, they're never going to win. Like, nothing's ever going to happen there. And he is of the mindset that he wants to play for the Blazers for the rest of his life. Like, he doesn't want to play another team. But it would be great if we could see him go somewhere and be a part of a championship team or a championship run. And I think he's... You know, I, I, I appreciate his loyalty to the franchise and to the area, but at the end of the day, dude, it's just like, you, 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 uh, you, you're selling yourself short. It is kind of funny, ironic, if you will. The best thing that Damian Lillard can do for the Blazers is consent to a trade. Yeah. That's the best thing. Yeah. He gets what he wants. Like, he'll, he'll get his ring. He'll get his you know, legacy and the team will finally get the pieces it needs to ascend to the next level and, you know, kudos to to Dame Lillard, you know he was, you know Clyde Drexler was number one, now he's number two and, and ultimately like he's already made his legacy important, now he's to start, you know, they need to start considering what that's going to look like after Damian Lillard is gone. And you're not doing that. You know, he's not doing that by wanting to stay there. Like, loyalty is great. Loyalty is great. It absolutely is great. He's averaging 24.7, 6.7, 4.2 rebounds per game. He's played almost 800 games in his career. Didn't know that. That's impressive. But the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking on Damian Lillard. And this team is only two games over 500. And they're four and a half games back at Denver. Right? They're they're just kind of hovering. They're just kind of hovering. Like you have Nurkic, that's nice. Let's get Anthony Simmons. Like 
okay, but there's, you know, this is not set up for long-term success. Long-term success should have happened already. Like, it's over. It's over. Like, you have Jeremy Grant, you have Josh Hart, you have Gary Payton. Not even that one. The, the Sun. Shit. You know, this team is not there. So, the the best thing that Damian Lillard could do is consent to a trade. But if he loves Portland that much, you know, that is what he would need to do. Because he's done all he can do as a player. And they have a ceiling. But if only he used his leverage as an asset, think about the returns the team can get for you, Mr. Lillard. Do them a solid, as they have done to you, and go on your merry way. It's a win-win for both parts. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave from the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, sweetlifebrownieco.com for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow on Instagram and Facebook too at Sweet Life Brownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them D&Z sent you. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co. Because there's always room for a brownie. <laughs> the tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> now, you're going to hear about it. We're a week late, but that's okay. We got a lot of problems with you people, and now you're going to hear about it. It is our annual Festivus airing of grievances. We got five each, and we're not holding back. Go for it, D. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I've got a problem with you people, and I'm going to tell you about it. My first problem is I have with Derek Carr. <laughs> 63 and 79 record in nine seasons with the Raiders. No playoff wins, one playoff appearance, straight trash, man. I've got a problem with you. Next one Russell Wilson, Mr. Let's Ride. Let's Ride where? Down the drain? <laughs> Down the hill? Over the hill? Single handedly destroyed the Denver Broncos. Might go down as one of the worst trains in Denver Broncos history. 12 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and 13 games. In 13 games, 7.2 yards per attempt. My dear Lord. From Russell Wilson, I've got a huge problem with you. Next one Fernando Tatis Jr. Motorcycle accident followed by a PED suspension. Man, with the, which might you might have cost your team a, a, a championship or They might have made the World Series if you actually played for the Padres this year. You know, you got to make a decision. You want to you want to be a clown? Then go to clown school. You want to play professional baseball? Get your shit together. Number four will surprise you. See, Tom Brady. Got a problem with you, Tom? You're the GOAT, man, but losing your right before playing another season, that's just clownish, man. I'm not, I am i am one of your biggest fans, but, you know, there's nothing left for you to do. Retire after the season, get yourself back, go take that, cut that job with Fox, and right off into the sunset. My last problem I have is with Kyrie Irving. Your comments and your actions over this year have been just just have offended so many people. 
get back to playing great basketball and keep your nonsense in your inner circle. Z, who do you have problems with? Oh, I got problems with officials Mm. all throughout sports. Nobody comes to watch you ref. No one. Never in the history of sports has anybody looked at the, the probables for the ump or the ref and said, yeah, I'm going to see Jeff Triplett. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go see Angel Hernandez. Oh, yeah, Don Koharski is the main ref. I'm in. Nobody gives a shit, guys. If you're the show, if you're the story, that means you fucked up. Not to mention, we have instant replay now. In every single major sport. You have instant replay. So we know in real time if you fucked up. We have challenges, challenge systems in place to overturn your fucked up edness. And you still persist on being the show. I got problems with refs all over. Every single game. Every single play. People are looking to the refs instead of letting it ride. (laughs) That's a problem. Every single play, every single highlight, you're immediately looking to see if there's a yellow flag. Enough, enough, enough. I have a major problem with officials. Y'all need to fucking step back. I got a big problem with Cristiano Ronaldo. This bitch ass. You don't like how you're being used at Man U. So you throw a hissy fit. You refuse to come off the bench. You storm off. You take time away. Then, oh, World Cup. Perfect. Like, you have the opportunity to kind of wash that taste out of people's mouths, right? But no. Now you have a problem with the Portuguese national coach with the way that he's using you. So you sit and you pout and you leave and you go to Saudi Arabia, but maybe you don't go to Saudi Arabia. Maybe you end up in Portugal because you're training for a South Saudi Arabian contract. Just play football. Stop worrying about how you're being used. Stop worrying about your rivalry with Messi. It's already been decided. Now's the time for you to focus on playing football. You need to play football. My third major problem is with the New York Jets. How did you screw this up that badly? How? Did you jet this up? Yes, I'm using it as a verb. You seemingly had a team ready to go. And you know what? I'm throwing the Colts in there as well. I'm going to throw the Raiders in there. I'm going to throw the Broncos in there. You seemingly had it figured out. You had one piece that you needed to fit into the hole. And you could not have gunked it up any more than you did. It's unbelievable to me that you guys screwed up that badly. And you let your fan bases down. You let the players who are ready to win now down. It's a bad look and it's complete trash for all of those organizations. The Texans are trying to lose. The Texans are trying to. They're in a rebuild. What's your excuse? My next one. You ready for this one? Carlos Correa. What are you doing? 
what is going on here? You renege from an offer with the with the Giants. Now there's an issue with the Mets, and you're not willing to to budge to renegotiate this deal when not one team but two teams have found an issue with your leg stemming from a 2014 surgery. These aren't lifetime guarantees, man. Like, that's not how this works. You need to be able to give a little bit, especially since these teams are now, like, one team has already, you know, openly canceled or postponed their press conference, allowing the Mets to swoop in. Now the Mets are a little iffy. Four teams have reached out to Boris in the, in the interim, but how are you not giving? How are you not giving on this right now? That's absolutely ridiculous. You need to give because next time your contract comes up, owners remember, GMs remember. I'm with you on Kyrie Irving. I'm with you on Kyrie Irving, but I got to go with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, playing for experiences, you're playing for memories, you're not playing for titles. You enabled this Kyrie Irving thing, you enabled the James Harden thing, you enabled the, the Ben Simmons thing. This is, your, this is your engineering, you're the puppet master, right? You're the puppet master here. Fix it. And then over the summer, you're, you're kicking the tires on getting out of Dodge. Like, that's Cristiano Ronaldo level of bitch assness. Like, I don't want to fix it. I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, poor you. Poor you. Get out of here with that noise. Get out of here with that noise. And then last but not least, my last bone to pick, my last problem is with fans. Yes, I said it, fans. At no point is it okay to threaten somebody's family, threaten physical harm, show up at somebody's house, Never, ever, ever. The most recent incident was the Dak Prescott thing where they threatened his family on Instagram. They threatened to kill his family. We have become habitual line steppers, especially on social media. We think we're keyboard cowboys. We need to take a step back and realize that this is entertainment. This is not life or death if this is life or death to you then may i suggest you seek some help this is meant to be an escape from life sports are an escape from the everyday life they're doing a job nobody goes to your place of work and threatens your family nobody goes to your place of business and threatens you so what gives you the right to do that to them? We've lost our way as fans. Sit back, enjoy the show. Because that's all it is, is a show. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you.
The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. Here's how it goes. We have a poll on our Twitter account at FadeRouteDNZ. And you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets the coveted ass trophy and a spot on this here show. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week, D? I don't. The NFL refs for cocking up Giants commies. <laughs> that badly. But can't, can't say it any clearer than that. They cocked it up that bad. But that was last week. This is this week. Who you got, D? Oh, man. Well, first up, I've got your boy, Derek Carr. <laughs> He's been a staple of this episode. Currently leading the league in interceptions, he was told they were going to go with Jared Sidham for the next two games, which prompted him to leave the facility, step away from the team. You've held this team back for the last five years. The least you could do is support the backup for the next two weeks. Derek Carr, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Next up, Zach Wilson. Number two pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, 9 for 18, 92 yards. And one interception against the Jaguars on Thursday night, primetime football at home. Zach Wilson, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, it's his coach, Robert Sala. Shame on you for going to bat for Zach Wilson and not speaking the truth. Despite all the great practices Coach Sala has seemed to find Zach playing in this season, Zach's going to be inactive this Sunday for Mike White. Kosala, I'm keeping this receipt. You are my alleged superstar of the week. Z, what do you got? Oh, all good choices. All very, very good choices. I'm going to start with Russell Wilson. Not only did you shit the bed against the Rams. Merry Christmas, Broncos country. Let's cry. But on the way out, on Nathaniel Hackett's way out. You wish you had played better for him. Play better. You're going to finish this season with fewer touchdowns than you do toilets in your house. Russell Wilson, you need to figure it out. Whomever the next coach is, whether it's Sean Payton, whether it's Daryl Bevel, whether it's Jim Bob Cooter, or dude you know AAU football you need to figure it out because you're going to be there for a very long time considering what they invested in you Russell Wilson you are my alleged superstar of the week Matt Jones for that late low dirty dirty hit in the loss by the Patriots last week. And it's got guys, it's got guys wanting to fight you, Mac. You're building a reputation. That's not good. But you need to realize that guys are going to come after you and they're going to come after you hard. Because if you keep doing shit like that, what do you think is going to happen to your teammates? Think about that and let that sink into you. Mac Jones, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Carlos Correa. Yeah, I said it. Carlos Correa. As a Met fan, I should be happy, right? I should be happy. Merry Christmas to me. But instead, this deal between Correa and the Mets is getting held up because of this guy's balky leg. And from what I hear, his camp doesn't really feel like they need to take any discounts. Two teams have already passed on you. Well, one team is about to pass on you. They feel like they've committed verbally to this agreement. But... If the giant, if it could be reported that you signed this contract and then you back out at the 11th hour, you should 
team feel comfortable giving you all this money, giving you a no movement, giving you no opt out? Why should a team feel comfortable in investing in you when this surfaces and you're not willing to work with them? It's a bad look, Carlos. It is a, an extremely bad look. Carlos Correa, you are my alleged superstar of the week. We've said our piece. Go to the Twitter account after the show and vote and vote and vote and vote. And for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. Need some last minute fantasy football advice? Then the boys at the Fade Route have you covered. Tune in every NFL Sunday to Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 with DNZ. DNI give you our top 1, 2, 3 fantasy starts or Green Light and fantasy sits or Red Light. That's Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 every NFL Sunday during the season. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get the Fade Route. That's Red Light, Green Light, 1, 2, 3 with DNZ every NFL Sunday during the season. Let's run the option and give you our picks for the week. It is the option for week 17 in the NFL. And you still have some time to join our NFL Pick'em on CBS Sports. Go to our Instagram link in bio. Click on it. It's called The Option. Easy for you to find. And play along with us. Currently, I have a four-point lead over D and the lovely Rita Sanchez. Foxy's close. Right behind. And Zach is lying in the weeds. One big week, two big weeks. And he could be right back up at the top. But let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Thursday night. Prime video. The 11-4 Dallas Cowboys go into Tennessee to take on the 7-8 Tennessee Titans. Uh, Dallas. um, Henry's doubtful. Tannehill's out. Malik Willis is in. Texans seem like they're getting ready to plan their winter vacation. What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? This is the game that gets Mike Brable fired. Right here. Cowboys win. This is the death knell for Mike Brable. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Happy New Year! 2023! Bring it in this way. At 1 p.m., the 4 and 11 Arizona Cardinals go into Atlanta to take on the 5 and 10 Falcons. Cards. Interesting. Some terrible teams. <laughs> this and so the JJ Watt retirement tour begins. I'm, I'm gonna so go gl- with the Falcons. So, I'm so glad they moved to 17 games. It was real well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we get to see more of this dreck in the in the Bird Bowl. I'm gonna go with the Falcons. Cordero Patterson's going to have a game. And who knows? Maybe Desmond Ritter will surprise him. But, yeah, I'll go with the Cardinals. I'll go with the Falcons, excuse me. The Cardinals, eh, just not moving the needle at all. The 3-12 and Chicago Bears go into Detroit to take on the 7-8 and Detroit Lions. Lions. Division matchup. This is going to be tough. And... I didn't expect, we didn't expect the Lions to fall down like they did last week against the Panthers. Kudos to the Panthers. They came to play. I don't think the Bears are going to be as equipped as the Carolina Panthers. Lions win pretty handily. The 7-8 and eight Jaguars go into Houston to take on the 2-12-1 and one Houston Texans. I'm so tempted to take the Texans 
they're trying they're trying to fuck up the number one pick. They're trying to because the Bears are three and twelve. The Bears are right there. So, like they're they're trying hard to screw this up. And there's a possibility that the Jags may also be able to get in on this number one pick situation, but that's an outside shot. I think the Jags take the win, get up to 500, and cement their case as division champions this year. The 4 and 11 Broncos go into Arrowhead to take on the 12 and 3 Chiefs. Chiefs. How about them Chiefs? Broncos country. The 8 and 7 Dolphins go into Foxborough to take on the 7 and 8 New England Patriots. Um, I don't know why. I feel like the Pats are going to lose this one. I'm thinking the Dolphins. No Tua. Teddy's going to get the start. There's not that much of a drop off. I'm feeling the Dolphins here too. I'm feeling the Dolphins here too. And that just, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll definitely see how uh, Teddy survives the game because he might be the quarterback for the foreseeable future, possibly into the playoffs. The 4-10-1 Indianapolis Colts go into MetLife to take on the 8-6-1 New York football Giants. Giants. Winning they're in, Giants clinch a playoff spot this weekend. You heard it here first. Go blue. Big blue. Right now. The 6-9 Saints go into Philly to take on the 13-2 Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. Pretty handily. Saints are no good. We're going to see what the Eagles are made of this weekend. And we'll see if they can keep the train moving. The 6-9 and nine Panthers at the 7-8 and eight Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, tough one there. Carolina. I'm liking the Panthers, too. I'm liking the Panthers, too. They're, it's unbelievable what Steve Wilkes has been able to do and apparently what Matt Rule was unable to do. This is the same Steve Wilkes that went one and fifteen. He went one and fifteen in his one year with the Cardinals. Let's not forget that. But they got something for Tampa Bay, and I think Tampa Bay is going to miss the playoffs, and that might bode poorly for one Mister Todd Bowles. The six and nine Browns at. The seven, seven and one Washington Commanders. Commies. Commanders are going to Wentz. They may end up seeing Sam Howell at some point. I gotta go with the Commanders as well. Like I, I haven't seen enough from the Browns. Deshaun Watson is not playing well. Let's call it like it is. The Commanders are gonna take a command of that last wild card spot and possibly clinch it all for the entire NFC East to where they're officially the playoff NFC beast. We're in the four o'clock hour now, the 11 and four San Francisco 49ers at the six and nine Las Vegas Raiders. Niners. Niners, even before the Stidham news, <laughs> the Niners are gonna take this one. Like now that the Stidham news is out there, Stidham, Stidham, Stidham. The 7 and 8 Jets go into Lumen Field to take on the 7 and 8 Seahawks and Geno Smith. Seahawks. Geno gets his revenge. Geno gets the revenge. How about them Hawks? Go Hawks. Pretty handle. The 12 and 3 Vikings at the 7 and 8 Green Bay Packers. Pack. Ooh, got scared off by the narrow defeat, the narrow win against the Giants, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna take the Vikings. I think they need to they need to stomp out the Packers now because the Packers 
It's starting to get a little something going. And a little momentum going into the playoffs can be a dangerous thing. So if they want to, if the Vikings want to rid themselves of this, they need to put the hammer down now. The 5-10 and 10 Rams at the 9-6 and six playoff bound Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers. They have nothing to play for now. They're clinched. But I got to think. I got to think that it's going to be the Chargers. Like, they have to, right? It has to be. It, it has to be. Otherwise, what are we doing? But that seems to be the Chargers in general. Like that, I've been saying, we've been saying that since what, Marty Schottenheimer was there? It has to be. It's got to be them. Or else, what the hell are we doing? What are we doing? Your Sunday night special. A little AFC North matchup. The 7-8 and eight Pittsburgh Steelers at the 10-5. and five. Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. Yeah. As good as the Steelers have been playing lately, I think that... I think that it's going to be the Ravens show. It needs to be. If they're going to make any kind of noise in the playoffs. And your Monday Night Delight. And this is a good one. Potentially game of the week. The 12 and 3 Buffalo Bills at the 11 and 4 Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals. Hmm. I'm going to take the Bills. I don't like what I saw out of the Bengals against the Patriots, almost blowing that 22 point lead. So if the Bills can get out in front, they can make it happen. Or if they get behind, Cincinnati defense is a little porous. It's a little suspect. And Josh Allen, Dawson Knox, Stefan Diggs, James Cook. James, they might have found something in James Cook. It, it seems to me that uh, they're doing a little bit better. If your fantasy, fantasy playoffs are continuing, start your best players. No buys. <laughs> this has been the Fade Route. DC. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast Wednesday nights on Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, where we listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go wrap, but we'll talk to you next week and a happy new year. want to get on the action we want to hear from you hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com slide in our dms on ig at fade route podcast drop us a dm on twitter at fade route dnz comment on our youtube channel the fade route with dnz questions comments picks segment suggestions you name it we want to hear from you get at us in crowd